This week's podcast is proudly sponsored by the Philips OLED Plus 935 TV, a new flagship OLED TV that combines the new AI Plus P5 processor with sound by Bowers & Wilkins to once again push the boundaries for outright picture and sound quality in a premium TV. To find out more, visit philips.com forward slash OLED Plus. Hello and welcome to Davy Forum's podcast streaming live on Wednesday, the 14th of October. I'm joining me in this edition, Steve Withers. Do I give you the ass or the crotch? Ed Selly. On a long enough timeline, the survival rate for everyone drops to zero. And Kaz Harlow. I felt like destroying something beautiful. Every time I say Ed Selly, Siri on my phone opens up. It uh, does it every time. I'm glad I switched it uh, to silent there, otherwise we'd have been interrupted. Welcome along. Thank you very much if you are viewing us live uh, at the moment on YouTube. Uh, it is appreciated. Thank you very much. Or if you're listening later in the week, and of course you can get the podcast audio-only version through iTunes, Spotify, and other providers, then thank you again for listening to the podcast. Um, also, if you're on YouTube, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. And of course, if you ring the bell, you'll be notified every time we uh, publish a new video. And we've got a whole load of TV reviews coming very, very soon. So keep your eyes peeled on our YouTube channel for that. Um, had a bit of a backlog, going to get them through them pretty quickly. Um, and also, if you do appreciate our editorial, uh, our forums, and the podcast and everything else that we do, you can, of course, support us in a couple of ways. Uh, one of those is patreon.com forward slash AV forums. If you want to automatically support us on a monthly basis for £3 a month, even though it says $4 on the screen there, uh, then head over there and sign Sign up, and uh, you so can four dollars also... plus VAT. <laughs> oh. Very international. <laughs> <It's> VAT. <laughs> so, it, 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 does the four dollars become four pounds? Because that's normally how it works, isn't it? The dollar to pound ratio. Um, yeah. And of course, if you want to uh, ask us a question and give us a donation of any size, uh, you can do that through streamlabs.com forward slash AV forums. And like I say, that's a perfect way to have your questions answered this evening. Uh, so, do get your questions in if you're watching us live. You can do that in the chat window next to the video that you're watching on YouTube. Um, if you're not watching on YouTube, YouTube's the best place to watch. So if you're watching through the forums or whatever, click the YouTube uh, button and open it up on YouTube. It's, it's, you get to see the whole chat then. Um, and of course, we've had some donations since last week that I have to mention. So um, I've been practicing the surname. I'm probably going to say it wrong, but Paulo Favera uh, donated I think five Paolo pounds. might be a better start. <laughs> what did I say? Paolo, not Paulo. Paolo. Yeah, that's because I was concentrating too much on the surname there. <laughs> you were. You were going straight and you were completely <laughs> cocked up the start. Target fixation. Yeah. Well, thanks for pointing that Paolo out. Paolo Favina, I, mean, I reckon. Yeah. You can tell us if I'm right or wrong in the uh, in the thread. <laughs> yeah. Well, thanks for just trashing that completely, Steve, because I thought I got away with it. So there you go. Um, he did eighty five pounds. Thank you very much. Um, Thank you, Paolo. Yeah. Um, Whatever. And he's got a question for you, Steve, by the looks no, of No, he him. hasn't. He hasn't. Because he wants to know about two channel power amps. So I think that's more of Ed's area than mine. Oh, I haven't read that okay. one. Hang on. Um, <laughs> buy and pay the front I'll, I'll read it out. I'll read it out. No, for no, you, I can see it. No, I can see it now. PS Audio M700 or Rotel RB1590. Well, hey, he's got he's got an SR7015, 7, 7, which is interesting because I'm going to be talking about that in a minute. Oh, um, and he's preamping the front speakers. And he's looking for a power amp to run his BMW 703 Series 2s. I mean, it's annoying because Morantz don't say? do stereo amps anymore. I mean, if you could find an old uh, Morantz PS11 um, secondhand, that would be perfect, it tonally. Uh, but of those two options, I'd go Rotel. Um, and um, if you wanted to be real wild card, um, have a look at the... It depends. I mean, budget is a bit elastic. Have a look at the small Luxman. Uh, class A B uh, stereo amplifier because tonally that's quite a close match and it will last um, forever uh, for as long as the Earth is capable of generating electricity. Luxman power amplifiers will continue to work, so it could be well worth a look too. Okay, and uh, Joker, he's also made a donation at seven pounds and eighty nine pence. Don't know. Last question, <laughs> sorry, quick question: Is it Joker or Joker? 
I, I suspect it's Jokers. It's simply because you know how it is. It's like um, when you choose oh, so your Twitter, West Country, you when know, you choose Joker. your Twitter handle and you find that actually, I mean, for example, there is an Ed. I should imagine Twitter there are quite handle. a few Jokers already online. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so I think he's just grown an extra R. Well, the internet's full of them, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Anyway, Joker donated seven pounds eighty nine before I was interrupted there yet again, um, and he's actually got a question for Ed. Yes, uh, this Again. is about the uh, compar- if I can do a comparison between um, Cobas and Tidal with full MQA decoding. Now, the answer is sort of, because actually none of my uh, first line hardware is MQA compatible, but Rune does a full MQA unpack as part of what it does. Um, I can give you the short answer for this. At the moment, Cobas is the best streaming service you can subscribe to. Um, it has an excellent library. It doesn't bother with any of these secondary compression systems like MQA. I mean, obviously MQA is technically not compression. There's no extra processing going on, I think is perhaps a, uh, a, a more accurate term. Obviously, Tidal's got the Atmos, which if you are listening in multi-channel is quite handy, but for stereo, pure audio, Cobuzz gets it for me um, because it, you just get high res out of everything. No messing about. Uh, and it's 15 quid a month, which is cheaper than it used to be as well. So good value all round, really. Okay, good stuff. Um, so that's your questions answered. Thank you very much for your support. It is appreciated. And of course, by supporting us, uh, you do help us uh, directly grow AV forums, improve the site speed. And hopefully you've seen some improvements this week because Stuart has been working on the site speed and it is now flying um, mm. for where it was last week. Uh, also, we can produce more editorial content, news and reviews and so on. And at some point, we're going to do the perfect podcast, just like the perfect lap. Keep dreaming those dreams. Yeah, we'll keep dreaming those dreams. Yeah, but you don't want to actually achieve the perfect podcast or lap. It's the desire to achieve it. It's the, you know, it's the ambition that keeps you going. I think well, I've always talking. said we're ambitious but crap. <laughs> yes, we definitely are. Ambition definitely <laughs> outreaches any talent we might have. Mm. But yeah. we've got better. I think we couldn't have, we couldn't have got a lot worse. Subjective. Really. This is also fair. <laughs> it's very subjective. Anyway, uh, what have you been doing this week, Ed? Uh, right. Well, first and foremost, I am uh, podcasting to you from my new laptop, which finally showed up. Um, I've transferred most. Oh, wait, Ed, of the... what's the background, by the way? I mean, uh, that is uh, a property that is involved in the film we just quoted. Uh, it's uh, oh, yes, 537 yes. Paper right, Street. Oh, yes. 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 Um, it's not my house. My house is in vaguely better condition than that. No, um, my new laptop has turned up. Um, uh, and uh, it's most of the way to being configured for for, for everything that I do. You look um, the same. Uh, well, I told you, it's still a 720p. I was expecting to see you in Dolby Vision and all sorts after. Well, I can see you in Dolby Vision if I turn it on. Um, <laughs> well, no, you uh, can't because we're not transmitting in Dolby Vision. Oh no, I can so. fake. It. I can put. I can put. You know, like your, your OLED's got it. I can put spoof version on. But I, yeah. you might be able to see this if I up the brightness. Um, I can. Yeah, I can turn a vivid and terrifying sort. Of, it, it is. Blue. I can. I can tan from this screen if I turn it all the way up. You just um, turn blue. You're, you're, you're the right colour there, Ed, but as soon as yeah. you turn it up... Oh, out, yeah, but that's because it's... It does make quite a good lighting source, though. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, it's a tanning salon. <laughs> uh, it, so that's all good. Um, it's it's very nice. And the keyboard, like all ThinkPads, is lovely. So, uh, I mean, other laptops are available, obviously, if you want to if you want to go that way. I do so like a ThinkPad. I use it as my uh, calibration um, yes. laptop, and it's, it's grand for, for that. Power. No, absolutely. Well, this is, uh, as I say, it means that my old laptop goes now into its period of being four years in reserve. And the one that spent four years in reserve, I'm probably going to get drunk one evening and put Linux on it just to see how badly I can break something. <laughs> um, otherwise, I have been doing some work for you guys, uh, doing some work for some other people. Um, and uh, I said, it's been otherwise, it's been quite quiet, really. Um, I've just been getting ready for when we're inevitably locked down again by practicing sitting quietly on my own. So, you know, <laughs> that every day, yeah, you know, I, I'm, I'm well practiced in this, so <laughs> it doesn't mean I'm going to enjoy it anymore, but I do at least have some practice. But yeah, that's I, me. I had a fantastic day today and well, an awful day today. So, um, obviously, reviewing TV, Steve, Steve's got a nice wide rack. Uh, TV rack. Well, um, no, it's not really. It's, it's two, two together, isn't it? Together, yeah. but they're low, long, and flat, and you can get just yeah. about anything up there, up to and including eighty-five inches. Because I right. Have in the past. Well, 
I've been this year uh, more and more larger screen sizes. So sixty five is the common size this this year, and a lot of designs like Sony um, and this uh, LG G ten behind me, the sixty five inch. It has feet, but the feet are right at the edge mm. um, of the panel. <laughs> And the, the old stand, which is behind the Samsung 8K box there, um, wasn't wide enough for that. So I would have to put the subwoofer next to the, the TV stand and then get that thing to position that to have this. So I've got a nice wide stand now, a nice wide rack. Uh, and thank you to AVS, uh, AVF sorry, Group uh, for supplying that. Um, it, they must have thought that I was useless at building things because uh, it turned up pre-assembled. <laughs> now... This that is made of it's it's made of metal. Help, did it? <laughs> made of metal and glass. So the box was the size of a seven foot coffin. A bit weighty nice. too, and I it imagine. weighed the same <laughs> as a seven foot coffin with a thirty stone block in it. So the two drivers that turned up, the two guys, the delivery drivers, uh, realized they had the stairs to contend with, and oh my god, what fun they had! Because we had to had to get through the door to start with, then up the stairs, then vertical to get round the 90 degree bend and then into the room and by the time they got into the room it wasn't even fully into the room i just said guys thank you very much i'll take it from here um take your covid and bugger off <laughs> yeah uh, took me because it was pre-assembled um in the box which you think is great but the thing is once i'd undone it i couldn't lift it myself it was too <laughs> heavy because it's metal and glass so i had to cut the box away and of course i'm getting polystyrene Everywhere and oh, all that. Of there. You'll be finding that for next <laughs> <laughs> so, so then eventually managed to stand it on its side and walk it out of the box, put it down to one side. I then had this huge box and all this polystyrene everywhere that I had to deal with. And I've only got one recycling bin outside. And there's no way I was putting all that in the Mustang and taking it up to uh, up to the local dump and waiting for six <laughs> hours to get into the local dump. So I ended up getting a Stanley knife and I cut the box into strips <laughs> that were just big enough to fit inside the recycling box. It took me three hours <laughs> to do that and break up all the polystyrene and put it into black bags and everything. But I managed to get everything away, but it took, like I say, a few hours of that. And then I had that 8K TV turn up and I've also got a... 55 inch Samsung there as well. So, two TVs. Where's, where's the stand then, Phil? The stand oh, is, um, let me your see. Your head's blocking it. You might just see it. Oh, there, there it is lurking. Yeah, yeah, yep. Yeah, I can just yeah. see it. Yeah. yeah. You can see it next week when I've got the, because um, obviously these TVs have just turned up um, a few hours ago. So, I haven't had a chance to unbox them and so on. So, uh, once I get that done, you'll be able to see the stand next week. So, I had that to do, TVs getting delivered and all the rest of it. And, and, Polystyrene, where I've hoovered three times and I'm still finding it. <laughs> yeah, I, I have to say, I agree with Daniel. I think an unboxing video of that would have been absolutely a time lapse <laughs> would be to die for. It would have um, to be in a time lapse. Perhaps with the audio off, though, because the audio would have to be off. Yeah. Oh, no, no, it would have to be the um, either the music from Tony Hart's uh, gallery thing. Uh, or there was a special piece of music that appears uh, used to appear on all the educational videos when I was a kid. And uh, I, weirdly, it cropped up on a YouTube video that Frankie Boyle posted on Twitter of a decomposing animal. Um, and uh, <laughs> it's, it's, it's now been back in my head for weeks as a result of that. Um, just very quickly, Daniel, uh, sorry, Martin Gillespie, where can one get an a TVR AV stand that can accommodate an 8500H and 17-inch plus television? Um, I don't know. That rack that Phil's got looks pretty large, but if you if you really need something that can do that, um, I have a Quadraspire QAVX. They're not standard. They don't exist naturally in dealers. They have to be special ordered, but that is essentially three That's... 430 mil width sections, as many shelves as you like. Um, and I, yeah, even at, with end end standpoints, I could fit a seventy inch on. on You'll that. be surprised how difficult it is to find stands that are wide enough um, from mm. normal retailers. I mean, like say we went to AVF uh, Group, who are uh, I think the UK's largest uh, stand manufacturer, and and the fifteen hundred was the biggest, which is what I've got. So it's uh, the fifteen hundred was the biggest one they do mm. uh, normal, and that that. That GX 65 inch just fits and the feet are right at the edge. So it just fits on there. So um, getting yeah, I mean, wider uh, than that, you're probably going to have to get two stands and put them together if it's any wider. But it all depends on the stand that the 70 inch comes with because if it's a central 
stand. Yeah. Um, then I'll be fine. <laughs> Put it like on those that, t- um, tiny pedestal things. <laughs> that, uh, that Samsung 8K TV, no problem. It's got a little, little stand. Like oh, that. I don't know about that, Steve. Have you felt the weight of it? No, no, I mean, the stand shouldn't be... <laughs> yes, I know. Yeah. Oh, it weighs a ton. <laughs> oh, it weighs an absolute ton. I wasn't expecting... This is the thing. It's a QLED TV. And we get the OLEDs in, they're nice and light, unless I've got a really big, heavy stand. And it's the, normally the, the stand. The G10's not heavy. light. No, no. But, it, but most of that's the, the... But anyway, this thing weighs a ton. Yeah, I wasn't expecting fun. it to be so heavy. 65 inches as well. I'm going to struggle with that on my own. So. Uh, but yeah, that G10 is not light either. It's... Very, very heavy. I've got a product heavy. product turning up for you guys next week where the, the I mean, the, the box is obviously no, nothing like what you've been fighting today in size terms, Phil, but it has a density, which basically means that things just go into orbit around it. It's unbelievable. I think it's um, it's it, it's knocking on for 50 kilos and it's a conventional 430 mil wide box. So um, it's going to be fun. It's, um, you are my density. <laughs> exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> I am next week. I am extremely dense. So. Yeah, it's already been dispatched. <laughs> so I'm hoping it arrives before the weekend. What's this, Kaz? That's a future. That's a future. Oh, it's, it's out. Is it? It's out next week. It depends, is, yeah. depends on you know who you are, but uh, for everyone else, it's out next week. <laughs> Right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, grumpy, review <laughs> grumpy Capybara says, "Evening. Is it recommended to mount a TV above a used fireplace? My current TV sits in a corner and makes positioning at was really awkward. The only thing I would say, obviously, if it's a used fireplace, it's not being used. I hope uh, if it is being used, I wouldn't put anything above anything that generates heat. Yeah, I think he means um, being used. If it's if it's yeah. if it's not used, um, the issue you're then going to have is normally the height. You don't want the TV too high." Um, it's like anything else. If you're wall mounting it, you want it about the same position as you would if you're mounting it on a on a TV stand or a TV rack. Um, if you go too high, you'll start cricking your neck uh, and looking up at the TV. Uh, it's never a good thing, especially if it's an LED LCD TV. You don't want to be looking up at one of them because just like off to the sides, uh, top and bottom, you're going to have issues with uh, viewing angles as well and losing the picture. So uh, a little bit more detail on that, and I can give you a more accurate answer. But if it's I'll a used fireplace, do, do not put it up. Do you, just put the sofa with your back to the fire, use the other wall, put your TV on that. <laughs> That's what um, I've done. <laughs> Right. Yeah. Uh, it's all the fireplace. <laughs> Weirdly, you, re- you rarely see that in right move photos. I find. <laughs> uh, yeah. A little more, more detail. And we'll try and sort of that one out for you. Um, right. So let's move on. Who have we not spoken to? Steve. Yeah, well, uh, what have I been doing then? I'm catching up on some some work, um, which I hadn't been able to do the week before. And um, I'm watching some films, really. Not much else. I, I, I'll tell you what. Maybe it's just me. I finally finished watching my um, Hitchcock box sets. I've, the last one was The Birds. Is it me? Or is it a bit crap? The ending is terrible. I think yeah. The Birds is rubbish. The first yeah. hour is basically Tippy Hedron kind of cop off with Rod Taylor. And then suddenly the birds start attacking everybody. And then they just, no explanation as to why. And then they just walk off at the end. And you're like, what was that all about then? Yeah, it's <laughs> anything. Yeah. Shocking is when you realise the little girl is Veronica um, Cartwright from Alien. <laughs> Uh, so that was a bit of a shock. Also, not the best picture, I have to say. I don't know whether the source material was a bit ropey, but um, nowhere near as impressive as Vertigo or, or, or Psycho. Um, and even Rwanda was much better. So uh, that was a disappointment. And then uh, I've ended up watching my way through the first seven films that Rob Reiner made. Um, what a run of movies. I, I, I would defy you to find any director in the history of cinema whose first seven films are all classics and all completely different. Go on then, uh, na- name them. Spinal Tap, The nice. Sure Thing, Stand By Me, The Princess Bride, When Harry Met Sally, Misery, and A Few Good Men. How about that for That's a run of films? That's not a bad set. <laughs> That's not a bad set. I, I hate When Harry Met Sally, but I, I have to acknowledge that it's not a it's a, it's a piece of film. I think you're in the minority there. <laughs> well, yeah, but we, we've established that I, there are certain films I yeah, loathe, which yeah, people, people get all dewy-eyed over. So I think there's an amazing run of films. And he, uh, I think he got never been nominated for an Academy Award for Best Director. One nomination, that was for producing A Few Good Men, because he got nominated for Best Film. None of his films have ever won. Oh, well, um, Kathy Bates won Best Actress in Chief of Misery. But um, yeah, I thought that was an amazing run of films. 
well, what, what a talent. I mean, he, sadly, he's not done much since, but I'll take any one of those. He complains a lot on Twitter. He's very good at complaining on Twitter. Yes, he's quite Twitter. vocal on Twitter. And to be honest, given where he lives, I don't blame him. Fair enough, but yeah. I yeah. mean, oh, obviously, um, if, you've, so, yeah, if you've got those in, if you've got those on your CV, you don't necessarily need to go out and prove yourself again. But he's not going to get himself an Academy Award complaining on Twitter. Let's put it like that. Mm. Yeah, I've been catching up with some films as well. We'll discuss that in the film section, I think. Um, right, <laughs> Kaz. Well, were they films that have been made in the last twenty years? <laughs> your pile is quite big, and, and it goes my back my, a while. my pile my pile has disappeared, Steve, because I went through it and thought, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> you just sold mag. Yeah. Was it? Have you was just it binned my Fast and Furious box sets? <laughs> no, no. I, Kaz, I watched that months ago. I, I, Years we, ago. <laughs> yeah, we, we discussed that at length. No, I've been catching up with uh, stuff on Disney Plus and so on. And we'll talk about it a little bit later on because it, it runs into other subjects that are, are up for uh, discussion this evening, uh, like streaming and so on. So we'll come back to that. Um, but I've been making an effort to catch up with, with things. I, I did all the Marvels last week and this week. I've been. Uh, going through some some other bits and pieces. So, Kaz, what have you been up to? Uh, aside from working, which I've clocked up 40 hours this week, I'm going to give you an update on Top Trumps. Oh. Because, so we've got that. It isn't mounted, so it's a little bit more jagged than last time. 599. Yeah, yeah. well, it says it in the corner, doesn't it? But <laughs> Yeah, that doesn't help. Okay, I'll Sorry, mask can you just, this. Why are you showing me pictures of cars? Oh, you missed this it last is, this week. This is Sorry. Kaz's Top Trumps project. Kaz's Top That's Trumps project. That's an AMG project. GTR, isn't it? The, the yeah. Uh, Mercedes, yeah. Uh, this one, coloured by my daughter, she wanted to go with very specific. It's kind of Prince's car from Batman. Hmm. It no, it's a bit like no, a Cerberus no, Speed cool. 12. But... It's an Aston Martin DBS Super Legra. Of course it is. And this, which is... It's a Porsche of some kind. Yeah, yeah, I know. It's gone a bit wrong. It's um, it's a 992 Turbo S. Uh, and yeah, that should be pretty obvious. Yeah, it's an Audi. Yeah. See that you, in the rear view mirror. Okay. You, you missed this last week, Steve, which is the, the originals. All of these are going to get mounted and we're going to make miniature top trumps. We're going to shrink them down and make top trumps. You can buy them. top trumps, right? <laughs> Amazon. Yeah, it's just, yeah. just my uh, son's school project. Oh, and right. uh, I, I'm enjoying the fact that I'm actually interested in it, which almost, <laughs> which for the seven years, <laughs> Ooh, seven years my, fair. Yeah, <laughs> you know, pretty much everything else that's come through has been, yeah, I, I don't really want to do that. We had to do reverse Monopoly with my, with my daughter. Actually, that I've was never, okay. I've never seen you so animated and engaged. <laughs> well, I mean, doing top trumps, making top trumps, it's almost like, yeah, being a kid How again. Are you were this excited about talking about films. <laughs> Give me a good film. Come on. Well, maybe, maybe he's not just the right year. Maybe he needs to review them at the end of the year as Steve, film top trumps. Steve, yeah. what you got, what you got to remember is Kaz does forty hours in a in a normal job, and then he, he sits. He's got kids, and then he sits <laughs> and watches streaming stuff on Netflix. And oh yeah, yeah. So. yeah. Well, I mean, no one's making you watch some of the crap you see you put yourself through. I mean, so you're obviously some kind of masochist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I am trying to warn the rest of the human race. I feel like I'm <laughs> something of a hero in these circumstances. Not, not all heroes wear capes. Cas yeah, exactly. Harlow, a warning for others. Yeah, yeah. I do get occasionally. I get people who, rather than going a four, actually go, "Thanks, I'm taking this off my list. You've saved me a couple of." Yeah, hours. well, oh, you, I, you, I you ignore did score. Tom's... Sorry, go. On. I was going to say you did score the, the right stuff wrong, Kaz. So, oh, so that's right it. Stuff wrong. yeah, yeah, I like the right stuff. I, I, I ignored Tom's score of four for the haunting of Blind Manor and ended up quite enjoying it. So, uh, <laughs> there you go. Yeah, I think I think uh, it's hard to hard to know where to go with the scores. I I mean, You're did you really from... like the right stuff? Yes, I I, I, I okay. did part partly because I'm a space nut. Um, was it much about and... space though? Well, it, it will get more. I mean, give them a yeah. break. They haven't got into mm. space yet. They've only managed to wangle the Corvette. That's what you're right at the start there. <laughs> yeah. Oh, speaking of which, uh, uh, Phil, I meant to mention, I was watching Misery again. I'd forgotten that, you know, at the beginning, he crashes in the snow. He's driving a Ford Mustang. He was asking for it, wasn't he? Trying to drive it's through heavy snow. Mustang in the snow. That's yeah, a death yeah. wish, that. <laughs> yeah, you had no chance of getting through that road in one piece. <laughs> 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 yeah. Right. Um, competition time, Kaz. Sure. Um, let's have a look. 
you can win a copy of Yield to the Night on Blu-ray. That closes 31st of October. Win a copy of Jewel on HMV exclusive uh, Blu-ray Steelbook. Closes 30th of October. Jaws on HMV exclusive 4K Steelbook. Closes 6th of November. Batman Death in the Family on Blu-ray. Closes 6th of November. Eureka's Made in Hong Kong on Blu-ray. That's 25th of October. Finding the Way Back on Blu-ray, 25th of October. Criterion's October titles on Blu-ray. Life and Times of Harvey Milk, Razorhead and Topsy Turvy. Closes 5th of November. Whiplash on 4K, closes 23rd of October. And limited edition Trip to the Moon box set closes 16th. So this week, all competitions open to eligible AV Forum members resident in the UK. I keep thinking when I see that Trip to the Moon thing that it's um, Trip number two to the moon by Axen, the uh, Acid House tune from about 1990. Absolutely brilliant because it samples the um, You Only Live Twice space music halfway through it just for a complete change of scene. Um, I really need to listen to that now. Um, well, we'll wait to the end of the podcast. Now. Oh, maybe. Uh, previous competition winners, guys. <laughs> sure. Uh, Mouski9 won the podcast exclusive Eureka three film Blu-ray bundle. Did he try the innovative policy of waiting until the question had been asked to answer? He, it? he did. He actually Excellent. answered it correctly. <laughs> and uh, you can always tell the ones who've waited. <laughs> Alabama 99 won a copy of The King of Staten Island on Blu ray. Okay, good stuff. Uh, we'll be back in a sec with hardware. <laughs> So we're audio heavy this week when it comes to our hardware reviews, um, all audio products, no TVs. I actually thought I'd gotten away from TVs. I thought, finally, I've cleared the deck, got rid of everything, and then obviously... Three more turned up. <laughs> there's, there's two more turned up here. There's a G, uh, G10 there for filming. Uh, there's a soundbar to review. And I've got Philips um, 935 turning up on Friday, which is their flagship OLED. So, yeah. Thought I'd cleared the decks, uh, no. But I have managed to have a look and start putting my thoughts down about the, the NAD T778 uh, AV receiver or AV amplifier. I've had it for a while now. Um, I like to keep products for a little while like this because, um, as we all know, with technology moving on, it's becoming more and more software uh, dependent when it comes to these types of products and there's been all sorts of uh, little niggles and, and so on with uh, lots of products um, where the software doesn't quite work. And the problem that we have reviewing these things, and I know Ed and Steve will back me up on this, is that you really can only try uh, these products with the sources and the setups that we have. There is no way that we can test every single connection and source that, that you may have in your system there's just no way we can do that. And, and networks are all different and will work differently and so on. So people are going to, you are going to get different results with different things. And TV is one of them. Um, people ask about EARC. There's only so much I can test using the radio with EARC to test that it works. If we were to try and test that, Steve, with every single possible sound bar and TV setup and so on, it's impossible. You t you take seven or eight months to review a TV. Just I mean, you have to basically concentrate on what would be what a product would primarily be used for. Yeah, um, absolutely. Given you know, given what it's what you know. So if, it, if it's an Atmos soundbar, then really you know what you're looking at is how does it deliver? How does it perform with Atmos? Plus, you know, things like ARC or EIRC. Do they work? Um, what does it sound like with music? That kind of stuff. You you can't go down a rabbit hole of every streaming service and every streaming, you know, and you're streaming every type of file. You just haven't got the time. And also, you don't spend you know six months with something. So sometimes things crop up much later, uh, and then when they were you know when you only had it for a week or two weeks. So there has to be a degree of realism here uh, when it comes to approaching any review. Yeah. I think. Yeah, absolutely. So I I guess where we do our reviews and where our content is is perfect because it's on a forum and owner's threads are absolutely mm. fantastic for these types of things so if you read our reviews and you want to find out a bit more about well will it work with this product or that product or in this setup or that setup go to the owner's threads the owner's threads that's are, what we do yeah <laughs> if we're going to review no, something go to the owner's yeah. thread and, and you get a heads up on what to expect sometimes yeah. not always yeah sometimes and, and if we're happy but if we mention things here normally my uh, pms you know if i mention i'm reviewing a product and people have got them i mean i, I have had people offer me uh, i think richard sim uh, 
offered me his uh, his access for a bit of software to try try out that I didn't have. Thank you for the offer there. It really is appreciated. Um, and I've had other members give me a heads up. So the 778, uh, I think it was Stevie DR gave me a heads up on a couple of issues that he was having with his. And I've tried to replicate them and I've managed to replicate a few of them. But some of them I just can't replicate. So it's going to come down to um, you know, different, uh, different units and different homes and different systems and all the rest of it. Um, so anyway, this the T778 is a nine-channel AV receiver. It features a hybrid digital uh, amplification. Um, NAD are very uh, honest in their power figures. Um, they fully disclose all channels driven simultaneously full bandwidth, which is 85 watts from nine channels. Great. I wish more manufacturers would do that. And, yeah, it's, it's, actually, it's disclose... actually genuinely useful rather than, yeah, you know, yeah. what it does under one channel. Close <laughs> 250 to watts when it blows yeah, up. Yeah. Close yeah. to an explosion, you know. Yeah. So so they also, they do dynamic power and they do FTC power as well. So eight ohms, 170 watts, four ohms um, uh, was, uh, sorry, <laughs> it's 140 watts at eight ohms and 170 watts at four ohms. Or if you go on dynamic power, which is the, the biggest measurements, eight ohms, 280 watts, uh, and so on so but literally that's one rung fingers. down from pmpo in terms exactly, of it's exactly. absolutely useless so at least they give you full disclosure <clears throat> power um 85 watts i believe that it's digital amplification <laughs> there are still people who don't like the idea of digital amplification and rather have ab and, and so on that's fair enough you, you pick your poison i've got to say i've been really surprised with just how powerful and dynamic uh the nad sounds it's the sound quality is fantastic. I've been really impressed with this this uh, AVR. Another thing is, it's not like any other AVR on the market in terms of design. Everything looks like it did 10, 15 years ago, coming from other manufacturers like Yamaha and Denon and Marantz and so on. Get on to that in a second. <laughs> I absolutely love the design of the 778 because it's using digital amplification and so on, they can get away with a smaller chassis. It's a much smaller footprint. Obviously, the selling point is the big F, uh, TFT color screen, touch screen uh, across the front. Minimalist design at the front. You have a small volume knob, two inputs, a headphone jack, and a power switch, and this big display at the front. Fantastic. It's absolutely brilliant. It does Dolby Atmos, DTSX, everything you'd expect to do. Because it's nine channels, um, you're, you're looking at 722. Uh, you can add to a two-channel amp and do 724. And NAD um, actually makes a good selection of those. So it's not an abstract yeah. thing. There's a good yeah. a good choice of units available. Yep. Um, so you're covered there. And then you get onto other things like Blue OS, um, which is their streaming and, and, and network system. It works perfectly. You know, you'll load up the app, pick Tidal or Spotify or whatever, uh, and you can use it through the amp. Uh, use it through the app and if you've got other blue os products the same as other manufacturers have there like heos and music cast and all the rest of it um you can also stream to uh, little speakers you know, i got sent a speaker to try it as well works perfectly does what it says on the tin i didn't have any issues really with setup at all um it doesn't have wi-fi on board it comes with a wi-fi dongle and the uh, uh, wi-fi um is connected to that um it has uh, Derek Live LE, which means it does uh, 500 hertz and below. Um, unless you're a real tweaker and you want, or, or you have a larger room where you have two or three rows of, of seats, you may want to go the full Derek Pro, uh, which it'll do, but you have to buy the license for that. Um, if you're just like, like me, one seat in position um, and your room is fairly well laid out, and I know my room really well, I've been using it 20 years, um, the 500 hertz and below was absolutely perfect. Um, I found Derek to be very user-friendly. Now, it didn't used to be like that. It used to be um, quite a certain bit of knowledge and a certain bit of uh, uh, using your, your laptops and so on and, and going in and, and, you know, it wasn't easy. This is really user-friendly, the, the new system. I, th I think it's 3.0 they're up to now. Um, explains everything well, tells you where to place the microphone in terms of uh, seat and position and so on. Uh, you get to choose your seat and position, so you can either have a single source or you can have a, a sofa. And it just works, and it tightened up. The, the main thing I noticed with it, and it was the same with Room Perfect that I've used recently, um, these two systems, they do it very well, where 
I'm using a subsat system, M and K speakers, and it just blends everything together perfectly. Uh, the crossovers are absolutely spot on. You can't distinguish the subwoofer from the speaker. It just makes it a nice cohesive um, sound stage all the way around. And um, with Atmos, I've done a lot of Atmos listening in terms of music from Tidal as well as obviously most movie soundtracks nowadays, streaming services uh, and discs are, are in Atmos. It's nice to see. And the, the effects placement is absolutely spot on. It's a very, very capable AVR. The only thing I would say is where some of the better systems like the Lingdorf Antest and the MP40 and, and, and other um, higher end AV amps and receivers, where you get the feeling of um, yeah, a wide sound stage and the walls sort of disappear. I know it's cliched, but the walls kind of disappear and you get that nice spacious sound. I found the NAD was a bit more room, roomy in terms of it was fixed to the room dimensions. It didn't feel like it was as expansive, but that was, that's just because I've, I've been listening to lots of different systems recently in that room. And that was the only thing I, I would really point to is, is perhaps being an issue. The other great thing about NAD and what I'm going to wrap up on is their modular design. Um, the modular design uh, construction, it's called MDC. And basically what that means is if you look at the back of the uh, of the receiver, you'll see that the connections are in, are in blocks and these blocks have screws and you can unscrew it and take it out and put a new set in. So the HDMI that's in there, there's six HDMIs, there's five in the back, one on the front, they're 2.0B um, and there's only one 4K uh, output. There's two uh, HDMI outputs, but only one's 4K. Uh, so there's no support for HDMI 2.1. However, because it's a modular design, the great thing is that NAD could put together a 2.1 set of connectors and outputs and you either take the unit to your dealer or you can do it yourself and swap it out. And there will be a small charge for that. And they haven't confirmed that this upgrade um, is coming, but because they take that approach, and I know Ed's looked at a number of NAD products, it means that there's less obsolescence when it comes to- They generally things. do come good with the things they announce. Um on roadmap um it doesn't happen overnight but then when it does turn up it generally does work in their defense so um you aren't invited to be a paid beta or you aren't invited to pay to be a beta tester so it won't it don't it, uh, my based on past performance with the av receivers don't buy this expecting there to be a full hdmi 2.1 suite by i don't know january because there won't no, be but the when it does has been announced yet but if and when it's announced it'll turn up and it'll work so yeah. you know that's the, that's the basic pattern from history yeah so i guess you know rounding up i haven't quite finished my review i'm busy writing it up as as a speaker i went halfway through the performance area and then my verdict but if i was to round it up it's a fantastic sound i i really like the sound um from this avr um, I can drive it with the M&Ks that are 4 ohm load. I can drive it really quite loud. In fact, I can drive it uncomfortably loud in my cinema room. No signs of distortion uh, or breakup or things getting, um, you know, uh, like running out of steam. It handles everything perfectly, and uh, I really like the sound quality. And that's the main thing I'll take away, because it doesn't have all, all the features that other amplifiers have. But then, Steve, we're going to come on to the Marantz, which has <laughs> which, <it does. laughs> which has about 15,000 labels and logos all over it, and, and so, which is the way it's getting. You know, these things... It's, it's getting tend, crazy. They tend to be the same thing every few years, and they have to add something new to to obviously draw in. I mean, I understand that it's a business to have to do that. Um, whereas NAD's approach is definitely, it. what we've got in here works. And it might not have everything, but if it suits you, it'll work. So we'll wrap up on that one and let's move on to the Marantz. Well, I mean, does it have to be? I mean, Denon, their state and Marantz stable mate, they, at least at the flagship level, the 8500, for example, and before that, the 7200, I mean, they were products that lasted a few years and they did offer upgrade paths hmm. uh, in a similar fashion to not quite as modular as the NAD but in a similar fashion to the NAD and you kind of wish more manufacturers would take that approach because it does get ridiculous I actually went back through you know I realized that over the last six years I'd done the 7011 the 7012 you did the 7013 <laughs> I've just done the 7015 and they are basically all exactly the same every year couple of new features get added in the, and strangely this year a feature has been taken off because it does, it's it's an AV amplifier not an AV receiver so there's no built-in tuners 
which doesn't mean bother me, but I'm sure some people will probably be up in arms. Um, so you get, you know, all these features added each year, but it's essentially the same uh, amplifier. Uh, and and you kind of think, why don't you just, you know, sell it? And then up, I know they want to sell more stuff, but you could, you could still sell more units. I mean, uh, for example, I'm assuming that JVC are selling quite a lot of their projectors, even though a few months later, a new product comes out and you're like, oh, no, it's out of date. Um, so as far as the 7015 goes, the big new thing this year is obviously it's got 8K pass through. It hasn't got HDMI 2.1 exactly. It's 40 gigs, not 48. And obviously we had that um, uh, podcast with Denon and Marantz who, and they went through this in detail. Yeah, Phil went but into quite some detail. detail. So you... <laughs> quite a lot of detail. So I won't, I, won't, I, won't, I mean, and the review's up, so I'm not gonna go into much detail, but basically it's got an HD, it's got um, one HDMI uh, input that supports 8K and 4K at 120 frames a second. And um, it's got two outputs that support 8K. Now I know people will say, oh, you know, what if I buy both games consoles? I want two inputs. Well, yeah, I suppose you could, because it's got EARC, you could connect one of the consoles directly to a display and then send the audio back via EARC instead. Um, essentially, it's, 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 you know, I think you did the seven, like I said, you did a 7013 and I, I think you came to some conclusion me, which is that this is a well-powered app. I mean, obviously the, the claim 200 watts per channel, stuff, no, don't ignore that, but this, there's plenty of headroom on this amplifier. It's, it's got plenty of power, easily drove my, my MK system. Um, so it's, it's well-powered. It's got every, just about every conceivable, uh, feature you could imagine including obviously Atmos, DTSX, and Auro 3D. So the question becomes quite often, the question that I get asked is you do one or two things. Do I go for the 8015? If you need 11 channels or you want a bit more oomph, okay, but otherwise they are very similar. I mean, certainly in terms of the features, they're identical. Uh, or do you go for the 6015? Well, um, not quite as powerful. Doesn't have Auro 3D, but is that really a big loss? Yeah. Um, so basically, if you're tight on cash, 6015 is definitely a good option. If you want 11 channels, 8015 is a good option. The other question that normally gets asked is, you know, do I go for the Marantz or the Denon? Well, they are part of the same group, uh, and we'll come back to San United again a bit later on. Um, and uh, and they do share a lot of the same features, and and the um, the menu system and, and the user interface is the same. Um, so they are quite similar, but there are differences. I always find, and maybe, I don't know about you think this, Phil or, or Ed, but generally I find that Marantz tend to be a bit more musical, uh, particularly with two-channel. And the Denons tend to be uh, to favour um, multi-channel soundtracks and movies. So if you're a big movie fan, I'd probably say go for Denon. I, I do. I've got a personal affection for Denons. Um, if you're more into music as well, you might want to look at the Morants. Um, yep. But both are excellent. Uh, and, and, and they're both deliberately tuned certain ways, Steve. Aren't yes, they, they are slightly Marantz different sounds. They are yep, slightly different. Yep. Yeah, Absolutely, so there is a difference. So, mm. seven hundred one five. Uh, it's a cracking, it's a cracking amplifier. <laughs> it's got masses and masses and masses of features. It sounds really good. It's got loads of power. Uh, it's one thousand five hundred ninety nine pounds. So you know, it's not overly priced. It's it's it's, it's pretty good price. Um, you can get um, the equivalent denim would be the um, the I think that would be the X four seven hundred at the moment, um, which feature wise is identical um, and power wise is pretty much the same. Uh, and that's I think hundred quid less, so you might want to, you know, if you want to look at that as an alternative. But um, yeah, it's 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 a really good um, amplifier, and you can, you kind of I, I'm sitting there thinking, you know, what can they possibly add for next year? <laughs> but I've been thinking that for the last five years, so but, I'm sure they'll find something. <laughs> but do they? This brings us on to the question: Do they need a new product every year? No, but they got. I guess you know, it's a hard like habit to break, um, and also it's a case of. Uh, there, it's almost like there needs, you know, the last thing we sort of encourage is the idea of back backroom dealings. But actually, if there could be a moratorium from all the major house brands going, actually, do you know what? Let's leave stuff in place for 24 months and see how it flies. I think that would actually be beneficial. I think that might well happen this time. It's possible that, that that this could be the impetus for that to actually actually happen. But yeah, you, you're right. I mean, it, it's, it, it's one of those things where two channel has never really had much of a problem with changing stuff when it's time to actually physically change and of something. course you, if you own it you don't have the depreciation no exactly that you do buying into products like this so um you know this this one what was it 1600 quid steve it's yeah. going to get discounted quite quickly probably 1400 quid and then if you look if you go on to the um, year, classifieds and look at last year's lineup yeah yeah it's a fraction of the cost so yeah. the depreciation is enormous because you know there's another one coming next year um 
I guess, I guess you know, and if you think about what, what are they going to add next year? Well, my guess would be some more HDMI connections with, with 8K. A hot water um, tap. That'd be brilliant. <laughs> yeah, tease made. They should <laughs> put tease made in them. That'd be brilliant. Uh, <laughs> I love tease maze. <laughs> Well, they're all time great inventions. Stay on target, T. <laughs> Here's the line for the podcast. <laughs> um, yeah. So, yes, you're absolutely. I mean, I agree with you, Phil. I, I think it would it would make personally it would it would make more sense from the point of view of the consumer if they could do products they could update. But I understand from business sense why they they need something to sell every year. Um, but it is, it is infuriating if you've just bought something and suddenly it's out of date. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so that's two uh, AV receivers or AV amplifiers, really. Um, if if we've got those, we're going to need something to use as a speaker, Ed. You are, but uh, the speaker that I'm uh, speaking about this week is, by the standards of the stuff that you've been looking at, um, uh, extraordinarily reasonable. A um, couple of years ago, I looked at the Mission LX2, um, and as I said, in that review copy, I was in the middle of a, a really busy phase of work and I sort of plugged them in. So I listened to them thinking, yeah, this isn't bad at all for a 400 pound speaker, except it wasn't a 400 pound speaker. When it launched, it was 160 quid. It was and remains one of the bargains of the decade. Absolutely untouchable. Um, it's now come round for revision. Uh, they've imaginatively titled it the Mark II. Uh, the price has crept up to a still pretty reasonable 230 quid. Um, this is, I mean, I think it's fair that they've titled it a Mark II. The basic driver complement cabinet size and design ethos hasn't particularly changed. What they have done is they've made it cosmetically vastly superior to the previous version. Um, now, I am aware that people have mixed opinions on this driver surround that Mission has. Um, they It sort of looks like an eyelash. Um, but uh, a number of people who I've, I've spoken to absolutely loathe it. So I need to make that you know, well, no. If you put the grill on, you can't see it anyway. No, this is true. And what's more, it now has uh, magnetic grill tabs. So uh, it, that's tidier as well. Um, I personally, in the flesh, I think this is now, it's a much smarter looking speaker. I mean, I won't lie, a significant chunk of this uh, increased budget has clearly gone on, on making it look less austere than its predecessor but i do think that's worth it i mean these things things have to be in in uh, in in public spaces or right you know your your living spaces so it, it pays for them to not look dreadful um it does sound better than its predecessor uh, as i say in the conclusion of this review uh, if you're expecting it to be a this changes everything moment it isn't because its predecessor was astoundingly good for an affordable loudspeaker and this is a little bit better so it's still astoundingly good and they've managed to eke out a bit more performance um and when we say i say that they've done that again at the start of the review i point this out and i've linked to uh, where i'm getting these calculations from because someone did send me a message i'm sorry i've forgotten who asking how did you work this out because i put it in the riga io review um, I use the Bank of England inflation calculator in reverse. So a £230 speaker in 2000 was hundred and uh, £131. Pounds. And in 1990, it was um, 88 quid or something along those lines. Um, and yet we were still selling 200 pound speakers at both of those time increments and they were you know still considered to be quite affordable because of televisions absolutely demolishing the construct of inflated value in hi-fi um, normal hi-fi has had to do extraordinary things in terms of value calculations these speakers are still making progress even with that in 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 taken into consideration which i think is an extraordinary achievement the other thing that is um worth bearing in mind and feeds back into the, your AV receiver discussions is that this uh, unusually for 2020 the LX range has grown in size not shrunk in size and lots of the benefit points to that are AV and not two channel so there are now two different sizes of center speaker um, which is as far as I'm concerned very useful because not everyone wants a, it has the space for a gigantic center speaker I'm aware that the larger the sound the better they generally are but you know needs must there is also an effects speaker um, so uh, it can be used either as an upward firing um, 
uh, object surround unit or I believe a wall mounted surround. Um, so there is a lot more um, flexibility in terms of the, the range that the mission is offering. Um, and there should be some good AV options to, to go with it as well. And based on the performance of the, the LX2, um, I think it's an absolutely brilliant place to start looking for an, an affordable speaker pack. Um, it, it fundamentally, it, it doesn't, doesn't you know rewrite the rules of what its predecessor did but that would have been impossible it's better than its predecessor and you know that's quite an achievement in itself ed yes can i ask a question you may my first hi-fi system way back yeah. in 1980 <laughs> uh was uh a rotel turntable uh a nad amp the classic um and uh, a pair of mission 700 leading edge speakers yes and since 1985, I've wondered, why do they put the driver above the Twitter? Oh, this is about, I, I put this in the review. I'm, I'm delighted, and I've put it in the review before, so I'm delighted to learn that you don't read them. Um, no, I don't read it. That's uh, <laughs> it's, uh, the reason for this is time alignment. Mission's argument has long been that it's easier to do time alignment to the human ear, assuming a given height above the ground, with the tweeter being beneath the mid-base driver. Um, and this isn't completely on its own thinking because, you know, there are speakers with uh, Dapolito configuration. So driver mm -hmm. tweeter, uh, mid-base tweeter, mid-base. This essentially is just taking the calculations based on the upper two drivers of a Dapolito. Uh, so, because I've always wondered two things, really. A, why were they doing that? And obviously, you know, if, if their way is correct, why does no one else do it? But I've always thought, is it just because... The, other, the, re the reason people put the, the, the mid-base driver below the tweeter is just because it's more stable to do that. Well, no, no. So it, it, essentially, you, you know, I, I'm, I'm going to come out with the, uh, the classic line, you can prove anything with facts. Um, <laughs> missions calculations as they stand are completely legitimate. But as with so much to do with the design and construction of loudspeakers, there is more than one way to crack a nut. So the, it's it's completely correct, and I would say, based on nothing more than just I'm afraid listening to them, I don't I don't really have the ability to measure time alignment and phase, but they do appear to have extremely good time alignment, and most mission speakers do, especially the two ways. But then equally, I've got um, two way stand mounts in front of me from Kudos and Bose and Wilkins, and they have two totally different arrangements to dealing with their tweeters. And they also have excellent time alignment. But I do think it leads back to when they were building affordable speakers back in the 80s, it was a quick win because it, 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 it getting the alignment was more of a challenge in some regards because of, you know, limitations to driver technology. And now it's maybe not so important. But the one thing is that if you are, you know, ver in any way versed in speaker brands, you can look at that little photo on the side of the video and know <laughs> it's, it's a mission. <laughs> So, yeah, but that's why they do it. Okay, thank you. Right. Um, before we wrap up and do the Q&As, a uh, bit of AV news. Ed, Bowers and Wilkins. So the purchase yes. has finally gone through with Sound United. Yes. I mean, obviously, Sound United obviously tried a couple of goes in the chip and pin machine, you know, and so on and so forth, and now it's gone through. Um, yes. I mean, obviously, this uh, there was that extraordinary press release earlier in the year it's like well, yeah. we're trying to do this it was and it, it was unclear whether that was some sort of pressure exercise or or frustration or what but yes it is over the line and Bowers and Wilkins is part of Sound United um in some ways not a lot has changed from what we were saying when it was speculation really um in some regards, it's an excellent match, um, especially in in markets outside the US, because let's face it, Bose and Wilkins has a bit more clout than, um, you know, definitive technology and so on and so forth. Um, in other regards, it, it, you know, it depends on the level of assimilation that um, Sound United wants to carry out here, um, because there are some parts of assimilating Bowers and Wilkins, which probably wouldn't do much for the actual brand identity so we'll, we'll wait to see how it goes but um i suppose if you want if you want the, the simplest and most positive spin to start with it guarantees well or as near as anything can in this day and age it guarantees the uh, the future for one of one of the uk's you know uh, elder statesman brands you know it, it, it's likely likely to stick around for a bit now um 
and in some regards if we're looking at this on a longer timeline i would you know we can go oh another british band going somewhere let's face it i think sound united is a is a, is a more it, it's a more reassuring owner than uh, a a californian sort of technology hedge fund yeah. think tank which was what it was before so i think that's a, a step in the right direction yep i'm going to use my old tagline it'll be interesting to see what happens with that moving forward oh um right so let's quickly do some q and a's before we move on to software so um like i say uh, podcast at avforums.com if you've got any questions you're listening during the week and not on the the live show you can send your emails in jay did that so jay kenway sent us an email says he's been an avid listener to the podcast getting on six years glutton for punishment mm. um i've been meaning to ask this on the weekly podcast so here goes the time has now come where i have been given the green light to upgrade some of my current system however which component would you say is the weakest link i'm thinking of speakers uh, or i've toyed with adding two channel speaker sorry two ceiling speakers to obtain a small atmos setup he says his setup is an e7 lg oled 55 inch then no, wrong with that Denon AVR X 2200. Uh, okay. He's got uh, modern short genie and um, alumni nines. Uh, SkyQ, Apple TV 4K, Xbox One X, uh, PS5 and order. So where's the weakest link there? I'm, I have no knowledge of the modern shots. That's the thing. I can tell you they've got a magnificently written instruction manual. It's a work of literature. Written by you, wasn't it? <laughs> couldn't possibly comment <laughs> um the genie is now design wise that's a 13 year old design uh, i mean it, not so much has changed in the world of loudspeakers that um uh that they're obsolete but then equally they are you know your ones will be as, as a minimum i think uh nine years old um and you know they, they, there will be a degree of mechanical wear inherent in that so it's possibly even if you don't change the sub. I mean, subs are quite robust because they have driver surrounds that you could fire small arms at, and they won't die. But the, the satellites themselves might be might be something which I'd, I'd I'd have a look at. Not least because if you wanted to go into height an object based surround, there's no because Mordant Short is really sadly no longer with us in any meaningful sense. There's no immediately obvious um, height match in in terms of tonal so and so forth so and we've said in many podcasts that speakers do often represent some of the biggest bang for your buck so that might be where i i'd, I'd possibly start looking steve what would you say i think um yes probably ed's right looking at that lineup of equipment there i mean the tv e7 i'm, I'm still using a, B, a b7 that's a great tv you're not going to get much you know you could buy a more recent lg but to be honest you're not going to get much more than you've already got there really uh, the X2200, I mean, it does D Dolby Atmos and, and DTSX. Again, like we were saying a minute ago, you could buy a more recent one, get a few more features. But uh, if you're happy with your uh, receiver, then, then there's no point changing that. SkyQ and Apple TV and the Xbox and the PS5, obviously, they're fine. So it looks like if you're looking to upgrade, maybe the speakers. I think adding a couple of speakers on the ceiling and using um, going for a 5.1.2 5 system with your um, with your Denon and, and take, making the most of Atmos and DTSX would seem like the obvious thing to do if you want to just, uh, you know, add something you don't already have to that system. Yeah, good advice there. Hopefully uh, that gives you some uh, ideas, Jay. Uh, so thank you very much for your email. And don't forget, you can email in your questions if you have them as well. So it's podcast at avforums.com. Uh, just going to look at some of these uh, questions that have come in. Oh, I've on got one that was chat. asked for me. Um, question for Ed, which Bluetooth headphones would you recommend for rock and heavier music? I'm thinking maybe the Sony WH-100XM4s. They are supposed to be superb, uh, but uh, I don't look at a lot of Sony equipment because I find getting hold of it quite of a challenge. But uh, we'll see where we go from there. But the last set, I mean, I think I tested the XM2s and they were extremely good. Um, I would say that um, our, our newly, newly Sound United um, owned Bowers and Wilkins PX7 is extremely good um, and it's what's more I, I, it's a bit of a BMW 5 series thing they're not going to blow you away in the first 10 minutes but they are crushingly competent they don't do anything wrong and they are incredibly easy to live with 
um, and that has to count for something. Um, uh, some of the bells and whistles I've had with Sony's Bluetooth in the past, unless you've got one of their phones, I found that it wasn't always as reliable as it could be. Whereas, obviously, Bose and Wilkins isn't a big mobile phone producer, um, so uh, <laughs> it, ten it tends to play nice with everything. Um, a left field choice but a very good choice nonetheless. The Neurophone, which I tested last year, um, you need to make sure, you need to make damn sure that you're all right with the fit, which is really weird and quite invasive. Um, but the performance is outstanding, absolutely superb. And if you're using the noise cancelling, I'm going to stick my neck out here, Neurophone has the best integration of noise cancelling versus actual music tonality I've ever tested at any price. Mm. I don't know what they've done and how they've done it, but normally, even now with 2020 model noise cancelling phones, you switch on the noise cancelling, there's a very slight tonal shift. The Neurophone is the only one I've ever tested which doesn't have that. There you go. Uh, Gustavo says, Phil, Steve, iPhone 12 with Dolby Vision, is that the end of HDR10 Plus? I um, don't think I it think, really started, did it? <laughs> that's just what I was going to come to, uh, the point I was going to come to. And and it it, it came to me today, actually, because the, the QLED box behind me, the 8K QLED box there, has a big logo for HDR10 Plus and no logo that I'm used to seeing for Dolby Vision. That's a big miss on Samsung's TVs. They, they, uh, they, they basically, if you're looking for Dolby Vision, you ain't going to get it on a Samsung TV. And that's a big... And you will get it on big, big literally everybody else. Everything else. else. <laughs> if, everybody else's TVs, you will get it. You'll get Plus also, both. not just the TVs. I mean, if you look at sources, you know, uh, Disney Plus, uh, Apple TV Plus, yep. Netflix, discs. Yep. Um, it's, it's, I mean, I think, I think you know, it's the, it's game over as far as that one goes i think everyone else has just moved everyone's moved on but no one's told samson that yet um because there just isn't the content and 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 you know i, I you know when you talk when you're looking at streaming services who are the dominant players and and there's there's three well i guess four if you count apple tv but certainly three which is disney and netflix and amazon yeah. and i and disney and, and netflix are way ahead of amazon in terms of uh, you know, having Dolby Vision and Dolby Atmos, whereas Amazon are currently HDR 10 plus and, and 5.1, I think, isn't it? They're yeah, like uh, you'll, get, audio, you'll so. get some Dolby Vision content on Amazon, but it's mainly HDR 10 plus. You did, but didn't we have a discussion recently where apparently it's all disappeared now? Maybe, maybe <laughs> what it did. Bit there was it's in terms of, of Atmos and Vision's maybe. gone. So yeah, I, haven't, uh, I haven't seen anything Dolby Vision on Atmos in a long time. No, not so, not since well, Jack Ryan was about the only thing anyway that did have it. Maybe mm. it Car Carnival Road did that have a bit as well? Yeah, maybe. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, I mean, from to I mean, it's always it's content that drives these things, and the content is Dolby Vision. And yeah, ab absolutely is. Yes. And um, no. sorry, yeah, so uh, there was another one. I said Martin me. Gillespie's asked a bit of a loaded question here, which is uh, <laughs> rel subwoofers or SVS. <laughs> The 15 16 inch range i mean basically you know comes down to personal preference doesn't it really i mean it's like saying what's better a ferrari or a uh, i don't know a porsche uh i mean uh, it, uh, does does rel make anything in the 15 16 inch range no I, i'm aware of I'm... i thought they topped out at 12 no i think they might have a couple of very expensive things that are quite big yeah i think they do actually i think they do make a couple of big ones um okay I don't know. I mean, I haven't my, heard them. <laughs> it, it, it comes down to it, it, in sheer cinematic grunt. It's all um, you know. A, a, a SVS, generally speaking, get gets the job done. They've got a bit uh, more subtle. No, late, yes, I, feel. I, I it, it, some of things, their blunt force trauma that they used to be guilty. Yes, of. but I would still argue in dexterity terms. Yeah. I'd give I'd give it to a rel. I, so I, it comes I, down I, to yes, what? I think that's probably true. I, I don't disagree with that that statement. Um, uh, Lars Taxi Man, um, the eight, the Denon, um, eight, eight hundred and ten. Um, it arrived on Friday, mate. So give me some time to test it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I'll probably have it up next week. That's the plan. So it shouldn't be too long. Yeah. Shouldn't be too long. Another week, that's, another week. That's or so. the, the anniversary <laughs> one. Is, is it as nice in the flesh as it is in the, the photograph? Oh, it's beautiful. Yeah, no, I mean, it's yeah. beautiful. Um, and um, and a nice throwback to because I'm like I said, I think earlier, I've always had a soft spot for Denon. And uh, I've had a few of their um, earlier AVRs, the really big boys, and um, this, this brought a nostalgic tear to my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Um, Scotty AUK says, do you find the volume low on Tidal Atmos tracks? Yes, it is very low. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Um, I have to turn up to, not my normal listening is 0, 010 dB. Um, I have to turn up to 0 dB. So there's a 10 dB difference there between what I'd normally listen at and uh, how low Tidal is on my system. And that's listening through an Apple TV. And the annoying thing with the Apple TV uh, and the Tidal app is that it'll let you play two or three tracks and then it stops working altogether. Um, and I have to reset my Apple box. I don't know if it's just my box is doing that. Um, or anybody else is having issues with Tidal, let me know because uh, I have to admit, I don't direct access the services anymore, it just all goes through Room and it's all you know fine. Yeah. But, um, that sounds a bit weird, yeah. Well, it's the only way you can get Atmos tracks at the minute is through uh, players like the Apple TV, so um, so it is a bit to weird. be I'm fair. Sure my spot, my Spotify, which I don't turn on very often the other day, uh, I turned I, I activated it the other day to test a piece of equipment and um, it had a massive schizoid moment and technically allowed me to use Spotify Connect to everything I'd ever previously attached via Spotify Connect, including products that had gone back to their manufacturer about three or four years ago, and that was the first time I'd ever seen that so. Um, they were that, that, that I've never seen anything like that. So maybe it's just weird streaming services week. We'll just work it out from there. <laughs> um, right. I noticed some uh, discussion there on Amazon Prime Day. Obviously, uh, we're in the final hours of that. Um, but there is pages on AV Films that you can go to um, if you're interested. If you're listening live and there's still a few hours to go, um, I moved it to the top and I'm trying to find it. So the page is avforums.com forward slash Amazon dash deals. Um, head over there. We've organized some deals. Obviously, um, you can help us um, by purchasing your uh, items through the affiliate uh, scheme that we have set up there. So if you click on AV Forums and then buy uh, the item, we do get an, an affiliate revenue from that. And it is uh, a great way to support us. And thank you if you do do that. So head over and check out the page. Like I said, it's only for those listening live really because it will be finished in a couple of hours um but it's well worth having a look did anybody pick anything up on the uh prime day deals no uh, i mean obviously i bought some more socks but that was before prime day and these weren't involved <laughs> anyway um and ironically i need to use amazon tomorrow but that's to buy my brother his birthday amazon gift certificate like i do every year <laughs> So um, <laughs> no, no effort was made or what? Uh, no, no. I asked him <laughs> if he wanted a physical gift and he said, no, I just want the money. So there you are. Um, yeah, we've, we've got an unspoken rule in our family for Christmas as well. It's certain uh, members of the family, they get Amazon vouchers there because that's, that's what they want. They want to go and buy them. Uh, great. Uh, oh, someone's like... reminded me. Sorry, go for... go sorry go for... I was going to say someone's just reminded Scotty A UK. Uh, rail make the HT1508 Predator, which is a 15 inch um, driver and fantastic name, Predator. I like that. That's a great name. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they, still, they, still, they still never took us up on Thunder Bastard, though, did yeah, they? Yeah, no, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I noticed some uh, listeners have been throwing some shade at uh, Yamaha's YPAO room EQ system. And yeah, I totally agree. It's crap. <laughs> yeah, it's they, they really need to have a rethink. <laughs> they need to on update that one. That one. <laughs> yeah, they need to update it. Um, because everybody, everybody else really has moved the game on. I mean, even Odyssey have updated. The, Odyssey, I, the just, I mean, there. again, that's Denon and Marantz, and uh, it, yeah. for what it, you know, it, it works. works pretty well. Yeah. It works pretty yeah. well, and uh, generally, I, I get good results from it. So, I mean, it's not as sophisticated as Dirac or some of the others, but um, yeah, yeah, at that price point, it, put, it delivers the goods. Yeah. Right, I think that's all the questions at this moment in time. We'll have another look before we finish tonight, but we really should be moving on uh, because time is moving on. So we'll be back in a sec with software. So let's move to Kaz. He's been sitting patiently uh, listening to us waffling on about hardware and answering questions. Um, so we're going to review a film. I don't know whether we are actually. Yeah, no, I've just I've just looked at the running order, and the person that's supposed to be reviewing the film's not on the on the podcast. I know, I know. So that's, that's going to be a difficult unless he types it into the chat window, and we just watch him type it in. No. Um, <laughs> he hasn't if given he, me. If he's uh... watching us. Why isn't he on the podcast? <laughs> And to be right. fair, he isn't. Yeah, I, I haven't got anything to say about St. Maud that yeah. isn't covered fully in Tom's review. But yeah. so. well, I'll tell you, I'll, I've heard I'll it's very you. good. <laughs> yeah, so have I, from Tom. 
<laughs> uh, I've heard other reviews also say it's very good. Not that I don't trust Tom's opinion, although I don't after watching Haunting and Blind Man. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I heard it's very good. Right. So um, what have you been watching, Kaz, recently? And what should we be looking out for? Well, you guys liked uh, the right stuff, but actually I didn't find it moved anywhere. Right. No, that's, that's... Give it time. It's a series. I understand yeah. that. I understand <laughs> that. But I mean, we live in an age where series live or die on their first couple of episodes. And I, I found it to be more Mad Men than the right stuff. And I love Mad Men, but also didn't like any it's of the It's a characters. strange series for Disney Plus. I have it, to yeah, say. it's just. It really it, feels slightly out of place because they kind of go like like more adults. HBO, maybe, or something. Which natural, uh, it's natural, yeah, it's National Geographic, but it's, it's yeah. got a, a more, a more, slightly more adult tone than a lot mm, of the Disney mm, shows. Mm. Um, and you kind of feel like either go fully adult, a bit more swearing, because like the film, the right stuff, uh, or you know, less so. But I mean, if they are planning to take this through all the way to Apollo and maybe beyond, then at least it, it should be really interesting. But, um, although obviously Apollo's been covered brilliantly by from the earth to the moon anyway yeah they're, um, they're saying f- further seasons might take us to the moon yeah they'll go through but gemini so, and then in yeah Apollo. they they're planning us a, a little bit of a slow burn on it i i mean i know the background's interesting but i i find it better done in other films which they, they went maybe... through the testing bloody quickly yeah exactly <laughs> like they, the first I mean, hour of the right stuff <laughs> yeah they i think i think they went um i think they went heavy on for want of a better term, kind of melodrama. I've got to be honest and say that, and I, this applies to a lot of space-related films and series and things, like what I watched Away, and I'm like, I don't care about their families. The interesting bit is getting to Mars or getting to the moon. That's the bit I'm interested in. I don't really care whether their families are upset or they <laughs> miss their husbands or whatever. That's not it. I'm, no, I'm sorry. I'm not interested. That's just family drama. I don't want to watch a family <laughs> drama. I want to watch a space drama. And if there isn't enough drama in getting to the moon or getting to Mars, then something's yeah. wrong because that's well, very dramatic. Well, that's why you so, liked Ad Astra then, Steve, is it? Because that was like emotionally... No, that was well. No, well, that was, again, that was about father and son, wasn't it? <laughs> so that's what I'm saying about this show. Is and moon pirates appear to have <laughs> and moon pirates, yeah, and basically it's apocalypse now with spaceships. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 di- I don't think I liked any of the characters. I also didn't like the cold open. I don't think they're likable people in real life. I mean, to be fair, that was pretty accurate. They were not. not I mean, they were. You know, they were overachieving military pilots uh, and very competitive, and, and that's the nature of what they were. Um, and they did cheat on their wives. And they did drink and smoke and misbehave, and you know because they could be dead the next day. I mean, uh, what I found more interesting was the guy who wrote the original book was trying to make a comment on how they were idolized by the media prior to even leaving the Earth, and how it was actually. Um... Oh, who's the guy? Who's the test pilot? Who was? Uh, oh, you mean in in the, in the film, not in the book. In the film, the right stuff. They use, um, um, oh, bloody, I've forgotten his name now. Yeah, the, exactly. the sound barrier. Um, Chuck yeah. Yeager. Chuck, Chuck Yeager. Yeager. Yeah, they use fact, Chuck Yeager as a fact, metaphor for what the right stuff in, really is. In, interesting fact. Yeah. Chuck Yeager broke the sound barrier today, 14th of October. Yeah. Not today's <laughs> day, back in Not 19, today, yeah. today, but yeah. it's 40, yeah. back in 47. It's yeah, it quite, quite old now. <laughs> Yeah, it's the 14th of October. Can I just say, if we're talking about astronauts being massive assholes, um, I've met <laughs> Chuck Yeager. Um, uh, and uh, make, make of me linking those two things what you will. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> Joe, Kitt- yeah if, Joe, Joe Kittinger, on the other hand, the man who jumped out of a balloon at 102,000 feet, legend, got yeah. absolutely plastered with us in the university bar. Brilliant. <laughs> but anyway, right stuff. If, if I can just quickly uh, say, I agree with Kaz and I agree with you, Steve. And I enjoyed it. So I'm ready for the next few episodes. I'll see how, how far we get into it. It could just be because I don't watch enough TV series to to be as um, yeah, I critical. Mean, yeah, it, it just... It, I'm going to watch some more of it. It just wasn't what I was expecting from it. And I think that... Um, what did you expect from it? I didn't expect... <laughs> more family I drama. I didn't expect <laughs> Mad Men Light. <laughs> I didn't expect Mad Men like... I've got to admit, I thought I it was an Apple TV show until I realised it was on Disney+. Plus. It just it's... felt like it, it would have been... That would have been a better suit for it. Anyway, anyway yeah, it, and, at least the production values look pretty good. Look, I tell you what. Uh, Phil, have you seen For All Mankind? 
That's all. Uh, no, not yet. Yeah, so so maybe that's what I expected, Steve. That's the answer. After seeing, I'll tell you what, I saw the trailer for season two of Four Man Mike. They go yeah. full warfare in that one. <laughs> yeah, so so Guns I think, everything. <laughs> so I think that uh, I think that for all mankind was was the the benchmark for me in watching this it was like well no for all mankind covers all of these things in a much more interesting way with interesting I, i'm gonna characters. have to tell you i don't i don't want to um spoilers here uh, <laughs> um kaz but basically the mercury missions weren't much cop i mean the first two were basically suborbital flights they went up a couple of miles and came down again <laughs> Yeah. Um, and, Big fireworks, and, and then, basically. Yeah, there wasn't a lot of drama in those missions. It, it was when they got to Gemini, obviously, obviously when they got to Apollo, that the really good stuff kicks in. But um, all right, we'll see where it goes. We'll see where it goes. And it is produced by Leonardo DiCaprio, isn't it? I didn't. Was I didn't. I didn't notice that. No, didn't notice that. Uh, so anyway, I was saying I'd caught up with with some films. I'm getting back into films. Getting back into catching up with stuff. So. Um, one of the things, though, and I was discussing this with Steve, was that I, I've now watched all the Marvel movies. I've now almost seen all the Pixar stuff that I haven't seen. So I watched um, Onward, which was okay. wasn't great. wasn't wasn't particularly fantastic, um, but it was it was serviceable. And I watched uh, Moana. Moana. Uh, Moana. That's great sorry, film. that's a great film. Yeah. Now that is probably. I I <laughs> really enjoyed that. I've got to say, I've really enjoyed the Rock. That. Is I thought the Rock was awesome. really good. And can we just be clear on this? How far I'll go is the best modern. It's a Disney good song. song. It's a really good song. And yeah. so so is your welcome, by the way. Well, yeah, that's a differently good song. But no, how far <laughs> uh, people get all excited about Let It Go, but how far I'll go is it indisputably a, a superior song indisputably it's just because small children find it harder to sing but they should not be the arbiters of this it's the better song yeah. yes i'd agree with that but my point with steve was right i watched all this i'm going to watch uh, mandalorian which is going to take us up to christmas then what because our subs are due in march and because i paid uh, and so did steve in, in march for a year so did i and so did Ed. <laughs> you so, can imagine how much use I've got out of it. Yeah, exactly. So well, I'm so Dis Souls Disney coming. Plus has got a bit of a problem, and that's why Soul's coming out on Christmas. Yeah, Day. Soul's coming for free. They've got it? no major TV shows in production right now. They've got one division in December. They got end of this month is the Mandalorian season two. After that, they're stuffed at the moment. And it, and yeah, you look at Netflix. I mean, God knows when they make these shows, <laughs> but every week there's a new show. Yeah, on yeah. yeah I mean, a new show. Show. we've been shut down all year. Yeah, tell Kaz about it. Kaz has to sit and watch all that. <laughs> but when are they making it? Wait, they, they must are. have so yeah. much stuff up their sleeves. <laughs> calm down, they Steve. Calm down. My, my, my microphone only goes to twenty kilohertz. And you're... <laughs> I don't. I don't know when they when they've shot all this stuff. I mean, The Witch is coming out again. It's like when did they make that? Yeah. I've got to so, say, uh, what, ha what happened to me though is, is uh, I'd done Disney Plus, then sat down to do Netflix. <laughs> I spent nearly half an hour going through the menus. I'm looking for something to watch. And in the end, I put some music on. Ed will love that fact. Welcome, no, wel but welcome, welcome to my entire life. As I say, I often spend the time that I'm actually eating my tea, um, browsing the menus, and I feel like, oh, I finished my tea. So I just turn the telly off and put a record on. Um, yeah. it's I don't know. Netflix's menus are easier to navigate than than Amazon's. But this oh, is a Amazons are appalling. Yes, I know, but this is yeah. and, and yeah, they're, 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 better, they're, they're better better than Disney's as well. But Disney's the, okay. But there is a counter to this that you just spend your time blitzing through the menus and not selecting anything. Um, yeah, that's what I ended up doing. And uh, it, it's it's some it's got to the stage now where I. Um, Got, what, I mean, I, I was bang up to date with my TV viewing. I watched an episode of A Touch of Frost last night. I think it was originally broadcast <laughs> in 1993. Yeah, you see, you see that, Ed? I had two nights in a row. So that was the first night I went through Netflix after I finished Disney Plus. I thought, oh, I'll listen to something instead. And then second night, going through Netflix, still couldn't find anything that I really wanted to watch. So I switched the Sky mini box on, uh, put, went over to movies, and what was playing? Twister. Twister. <laughs> I, I started watching... The intention of just watching five minutes and then flicking through, I sat and watched the whole thing. Yeah, but th those are the rules. When Twister is on, you sit down and watch it. Uh, and you marvel. I just mar I One, it's perfectly pitched for not giving it your undivided attention. Um, and two, I still marvel at the, 
dodge product placement. It's the <laughs> best piece of product placement in the history of filmmaking. You know, yep. houses and, and stuff are being blown around. Not that dodge. Dodge <laughs> is fine. We got cows. No, I think that's the same one. <laughs> and of course, Philip Seymour Hoffman in there, who's completely unrecognisable uh, in it. Yeah, uh, and and some of the casting. I, I was saying this to Steve the other day. The casting was fantastic. When you look back on it now, it's got a great cast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, but you yeah. get the feeling every now and again with certain films, it's like people go, "Where's it being filmed? How long is it going to take? Uh, and what's the weather like?" And it's like, "Okay, fine. I'm going to possibly drop my absolutely high standards and and just get this one." I mean, it's it's, it's I, I I ponder the mechanics of how Hillary Swank came to be in the core. Um, uh, that, that, <laughs> a that's big that. check. I well, yes, <laughs> but nevertheless, you know, I, I can the core has got a pretty good cast. Yeah. All of them really should hang their heads in shame at being in that. One. Not, a, not at all. That's firmly in the guilty pleasure <laughs> film category. Yeah, it is. It is a bit. It is a bit. I love the fact they made they made the ship out of unobtainium. <laughs> unobtainium, defo. That's a great invention. Yeah, yeah, one of the best. Sorry, just taking this back to current news rather than things that happened forty years ago. <laughs> um, uh, Yes, Disney's moving soul to Christmas Day, uh, and not even on a premium, but you know, just for any any subscribers to yeah, watch. It's them. free, isn't it? Yeah, it's free on Christmas Day. I, I, it's clearly two reasons. One, no cinemas are open, and they realise that. Um, they got, uh, and they weren't going to make any money if they did put it out. Is in it the just cinema. Christmas Day? No, no, from Christmas Day. Sorry, from Christmas. From, from Day. Christmas yeah. Day, yeah. But it's, it's because I'm I'm afraid I'm normally far too, far too drunk to operate a television by, by <laughs> most of the way through Christmas Day. But so. it's bad news for the cinemas because I mean that was supposed to come out in November at the cinema. So now there's nothing, literally nothing coming out until December. And that's currently Free Guy and Death on the Nile, which I believe are both Fox Productions, which I think Disney are contractually obliged to release at the cinema, so they haven't got any option. Um, same with New, Mut- New, New, New Mutants. Uh, and then on, on Christmas Day, it's supposed to be Wonder Woman 1984, but you know, I, I, we'll see what happens there. So We're talking about I mean, a joint cinema streaming release, or the, that's the rumour. No one's obviously well, um, saying that. So, well, but... coming to America, that's apparently get, coming yeah, to... streaming, Amazon. Two. Yeah. That's going to go to Amazon, apparently, <laughs> for a sizable chunk of cash. Yeah. So, um, I mean, the poor old cinemas... I mean, I don't know what they're going to do because there's literally nothing for them to show anymore. No, uh, uh, but we, uh, I mean, obviously, we, you know, in your absence, we, we'd, some of this mechanics was discussed with the Cineworld announcement last yeah, last week. Obviously, oh, you know, you talked about last week. So. Yes, um, but um, I mean, yeah, it, it, the, there's so many, so many things that were going, almost certainly going to happen as gradual evolutionary things where it's well, this is our, you know, our Permian extinction moment. And what comes out the other end will be radically different. And oh, well done for turning your video off, Steve. Um, <laughs> will be... the, the cat was trying to get out the door and <laughs> couldn't. <laughs> so I'm just letting her out. Ra- radically, well, you know, certain many things are being ra- radically altered, um, and this unfortunately is, is one of them. And the mechanics of what cinemas can expect in terms of of exclusivity, I think, has been changed forever. Yeah. So at least I can, on you know, Christmas Day, I can sit and watch Soul with my microwaved um, Christmas, Christmas Oh, I, I Google, I've already Googled <laughs> because, Christmas dinner for one. Be, because of lockdown and won't be able to go and stay with family and visit family and stuff. Yeah, well, I mean, I... Um, God for that. <laughs> God, you are... It, what's the... It, you are literally the like the inverse to a little ray of sun, sunshine. It's like having a, it's like having a tiny I, black hole on the podcast. Can't wait for, can't wait for December. Lord of the Rings, 4K disc, Hobbit, 4K disc. It's, it's going to be an expensive month, December, I have to say. Oh, 24p, though, please. Hobbit. Yeah, no, it is, because you can't do 48 on uh, on 4K disc. You can only do 60 or 24. Oh, let's go for the 60 version. That would be fantastic. And the <laughs> New Mutants is out in November, um, if Tom, if you're watching. Yeah, I heard and, about that as well. And uh, uh, in December as well, the death of Michael Corleone. So um, basically, uh, Coppola has re-edited The Godfather Part Three to the film he originally wanted to make. Has he, he really it, though? Has he really? I, I think he's tweaked with it, but he wanted he's, to call it Death of Michael Corleone, and obviously yeah. Paramount said bollocks to that. You're calling it The Godfather Part Three, so people know what the hell it is. Same way as Michael, uh, as uh, Winnie Peter Batty wanted to call Exorcist Three Legion after his book. And then they said, no, 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 no. <laughs> Exorcist 3. Um, <laughs> and um, 
And then the films, the Godfather films, all of them are, are apparently going to be hitting 4K disc in either late next year or early the year after because 2022 will be the 50th anniversary. Yeah, of but he's, he, he's not doing his new film in 4K. He's releasing it on Blu-ray. No, no, but I, I think presumably because they're planning a, a, a 4K. Which 4K is board. absolutely ridiculous. But At least Will Warners did say with the Lord of the Rings stuff that you can buy it now or in December. Or yeah. you can wait yes, next summer yes. for a, a big, massive box set with yeah. presumably all the deleted scenes they've been talking about for years and all that sort of stuff. I mean, I, I quite like Godfather Three, but I'm not sure what a new beginning and new end is gonna. It's 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 gonna crap. Do for it. I I, I don't <laughs> like it like it I like the first at the end two, of Godfather but... Part Two, and they should yeah. have left it well alone. <laughs> it doesn't. It doesn't even look like it's the same kind of movie as the first two. The first two have a very distinctive feel to them, and the it third one look feels nineties. Looks, you know, he's by then he, he stopped being a brilliant actor. Um, obviously, <laughs> don't blame Sophia Coppola, she just mean? filled in at, filled in at the last yeah, minute yeah. for uh, Winona Ryder. Um, yeah, it's not, it's not a great film, but I'm, I'm curious to see what he's done. I mean, but you can't polish a turd, can you? At the end of the day, well, you can, it's been scientifically, <laughs> yeah, you yeah, can, you can fossilize it. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and, talk, and talking about turds, um, Star <laughs> Trek, well, nice discovery. segue. Season yeah, Discovery. Yeah, is back on Friday. Um, are we watching this? Uh, oh, well, yeah. I haven't watched any of the others so far, so probably not. No, uh, I'm not bothered. To be honest, is anyone else bothered? Well, yeah. I've got to review it. Oh, well, yeah, okay, you've got, <laughs> it's sorry, on Netflix. You've what got are you to watch about? it. <laughs> I got to review it. I'm a lot more excited about the trailer I saw for for um Expanse number exactly. season five yeah. in December. That looks awesome. Yeah, exactly. That's that's I, what everyone should be watching. But, can't but, believe it's nearly a year since the last Expanse season four. Almost mm. always the best thing they do in Star Trek Discovery seasons is introduce a character you really like to either kill them or get um send them out of the season. They're, that's all they seem to do. Are there, and, uh, uh, is Pike's in this, isn't he? No, 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 he's no, that's no, what it's I'm set thousands of years in the future. Didn't you watch oh, the previous yeah, season? Yeah, yes, <laughs> it's gone. So there's no, oh, you've just reminded me they went through the bloody one hole, yeah, yeah. So oh, now, that, no. that, so, yeah, yeah, it's oh. utter yeah. cobblers. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. I think, she, well. I think she's changed her hair. <laughs> wow, that makes all the difference. All the difference, yeah. Thanks. Yeah, so, so, uh, I know, I know Netflix didn't want to show it, but they were contractually obliged to because it hasn't been a big, a big earner for them. I, I um, suppose the, why they didn't. The, the, the positive that we're going to take out of this, Steve, is that we will get a red letter media uh, reviews of this, and they're always far yeah, more entertaining will. than the actual series is. <laughs> Yes. Watching, watching it how, how depressed the, those guys are. Or old Mike. <laughs> or Mike. Um, okay, so I think that's about it. Uh, other than Ed's music choice of the week that we have to do. Have to. You asked me to provide it. Um, I'll be brief because <laughs> it's something that, that it, it's, it wasn't a great week for music um, this week on after a couple of really strong ones. But this is a bit of an interest, an, an, an odd one. Is a Danish artist called Kolsch, uh, K O L S C H, uh, and he's done three albums so far, which have had year titles: 1977, 1983, and 1989, which essentially are. Uh, ambient electronic soundtracks to his significant years in his life when he was born when he moved somewhere and when his parents split up um these are that this is a bit different because now here nowhere and those are all that's four words not three um is taking the same themes and just essentially soundtracking 2020 um make of that what you will i think it's a good listen um it's on all the major streaming services um it's thoughtful electronic music it goes different places it moves at different speeds it it, it it has texture for want of a better word um and um yeah i i think it's it's well worth it's well worth the uh the, the uh, a bit of your time uh a mention also for steve's benefit because i'm sure he's probably ordered it anyway but the uh, new suede box set gets everything covered um that's what, quite smart box set? there's a whole new suede box set i stuck of it in what? this well everything it's six discs i think um, of yeah, I should investigate and, if necessary, order. Beautiful oh, Ones, uh, oh. colon, The Best of Suede, 1992 to 2018. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's four CDs or six six records. Okay, I'll see if there's anything on it I don't already have. 
Um, unless it's Bowie's doing it. Well, obviously Bowie's not He's doing not doing it. He's not doing it. Bowie's label <laughs> has got a, well, I think it's called Brilliant, Brilliant Live Adventures. So they're putting out a live album from the 90s. So they're all from the 90s, these albums. Uh, live album every month for the next six months. So the gift keeps on giving, that's Bowie. Mm. Okay. Well, that that and Prince, you know, if you know, yeah. they, never been more prolific. But uh, there you are. But no, yeah. that's music choice. Uh, it's not been a, not been a great week for music. I have high hopes that things will be a bit better on Friday. I'm still listening to a few of them that you sent through a few weeks ago. It's, uh, they've been on high rotation anyway. The, the last few um, that you've recommended, so keep them coming, Ed. Yeah, well, do it keeps uh, keeps me busy while I'm writing reviews and stuff. It's always good, right? I think that's about it. We just need to do the podcast competition, don't we, Kaz? We do. So the podcast competition is to win a copy of You Should Have Left on Blu-ray. And the question's simple. Who plays the daughter? And so you pick the correct answer and the questions. And how many have got it wrong so far? Oh, that's an interesting question. We should tally that every time. I'll just have a quick look and see how many people have entered it. Oh, look, we've got seven, only seven, zero percent correct. <laughs> so, I'm just saying that yeah, the, listen I, to made, the podcast, I made the question so that the answer wasn't Kevin Bacon or Amanda Seyfried. <laughs> okay, so I'm just saying. Well, one day the answer will be Kevin Bacon. <laughs> it's, it's really obvious what the answer is once you know the question. <laughs> Good stuff. Well, if you've enjoyed uh, tonight's podcast, um, then please remember if you are watching on YouTube to like the video. That's really important. It helps the uh, the podcast get found in search results and so on. Brings new people into uh, the AV Forums cult and... Uh, we trap them and we keep them. Family. We We're send a family, the, not we send a cult. Them, we send them to the classifieds and bankrupt them within weeks. That's that's what we do here at AV4. Oh, sorry, can I ask something quickly, Netflix-wise? Did anybody else watch American Murder, The Family Next Door? No. Watch it. It's because uh, I didn't. I knew nothing about the case. I'm pretty sure none of you will as well because I don't think it made the news over here. Uh, it's made in, it's a documentary. It's an hour and 20 minutes. It's entirely composed of the family's own videos, police body cams, the police cameras in the, in the police station when they're interviewing, um, and some other stuff provided by various people, TV, TV crews, that sort of stuff. It's, it's an, so it's, it's a full documentary about a murder, entirely composed of actual footage, and it is incredible. Well, they are. They do. I, I mean, Netflix does churn out some more absolutely stonking. No, stonking this is an absolute stonker, though, just because, you know, there's no talking heads. There's no recreations. It's all for real. And um, and it's shocking when you get to the end and realize what's actually been going on. Uh, I recommend it highly. It's called Brilliant. American Murder, The Family Next Door. OK, right. skills. Good stuff. Well, that's it for the podcast this week. My thanks to Steve Weathers. You met me at a very strange time in my life. Ed Sally. I am Jack's wasted life. And Kaz Hallow. When you have insomnia, you're never really asleep. Uh, just remember, if you have enjoyed the podcast, then please like and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Uh, click the notification bell as well to be informed every time we uh, provide another video or launch another video. You can also follow us on Twitter and Facebook. You can bookmark avforums.com for the latest reviews, news and videos. And of course, you can leave us a five-star rating on any of the podcast services that you use that allow it. Um, and that's it this week. Thanks for joining us. I'm Phil Hinton. We'll see you again next Wednesday. <laughs>